Hi everyone, today we're going to be learning all about water. So let's talk about why water is so important. Water makes up 75% of the Earth's surface and it makes up a lot of you as well. 50 to 90 percent of your living tissue is made up of water. So if you weighed 145 pounds, 100 pounds of that is water. So that is a lot of water molecules inside your body. Water molecules are what we call polar covalent. And if you see in this animation here, the electrons are spending more time around one than the other. This is a polar covalent bond. So what a polar covalent bond is, is it's when electrons are shared unequally. And that's very true with water. You'll notice that this electron here is being shared between the hydrogen and the oxygen atoms. And those electrons are being shared unequally. They're closer to the oxygen atom than they are to the hydrogen atom. And what that does is it makes the oxygen side of water slightly negative. And the hydrogen side of the water molecule is slightly positive. We call those dipoles. And we have a symbol for it. It's kind of a curly S. So this hydrogen is slightly positive. It's a positive dipole and this hydrogen is slightly positive. It's a positive dipole as well. And this oxygen atom is slightly negative. It is a negative dipole. So if you look at this diagram of water, you'll notice that the bond that is formed between this slightly positive hydrogen is called a polar covalent bond. Polar because the electrons are shared unequally and covalent because the electrons are being shared. And so this bond on this side between this hydrogen and this oxygen is also called a polar covalent bond. So we'll take a closer look at the bonds between water. Here's a water molecule. Oxygen slightly negative, hydrogen slightly positive. So they have charged ends. And what happens when a one water molecule is anywhere near another water molecule is they tend to stick together. So you see that they're sticking together with a hydrogen bond. The hydrogen bonds form because opposites attract. So water is polar and when and when two polar molecules, they form a hydrogen bond. So this bond here is a hydrogen bond. This bond here, if you'll remember, and this bond here is a polar covalent bond. And when they're collectively together like that, they form what's called a lattice. So water molecules are joined by hydrogen bonds. Those hydrogen bonds are quite weak, but when they are all together in a lattice, they're very strong, so collectively quite strong. And this is important because this makes water extremely stable. Here's a more of a three-dimensional view of those hydrogen bonds creating a lattice between water molecules. This is what hydrogen bonds would look like in an ice crystal. And ice floats on water. It's very important for life because if you were a fish living underwater during the winter, you wouldn't want that ice to form on top of the water and then crush you as it sank to the bottom. So water expands when it becomes ice, when it freezes, and as it does that it becomes less dense and that's what allows ice to float on water. So we're going to need to know five properties of water that make water so important to life. The first property we're going to talk about is surface tension. So surface tension is very clearly seen if you've ever looked at a water strider or if you've ever put a paper clip on top of a water or a needle on top of water and it's floated. The reason it floats is because if you look at this picture, you'll see all of the water mole molecules are sticky. They're stuck to each other through those hydrogen bonds and that pulls them apart. The water is being moved apart here, here, here. and and that allows the water strider to glide on top of the water because the surface tension isn't being broken and all those water molecules are um, pulling apart, they're stuck to each other. So you see the force of the surface tension is going this way, gravity's pulling it down this way, but it's allowing the needle to still stay on top of the water. This is also clear if you've ever had a glass of water and you've filled it absolutely as full as you can 
and you end up getting water sitting on top of it like this and you can look from the side of the water cup and see a bubble like that and that is surface tension that's allowing the water to stay like that. So water is sticky, the water molecules stick together with hydrogen bonds and that property is called cohesion. Here, Cohesion is the stickiness of water due to those hydrogen bonds. The second property we're going to talk about is capillary action and that's when water can get sucked up against gravity and again that's due to cohesion because the water molecules are stuck to each other. But it's also due to another property called adhesion. Now adhesion is when water will stick to the outer surface. So if you look at this straw, water is not only stuck to itself and pulling other water molecules up behind it, the water is also sticking to the surface of the straw. And this is exactly what happens inside a plant when it's trying to move water up from the roots all the way up to the leaves of the plant. So capillary action, very important to living things as well. Next we'll talk about why water has a high heat of vaporization. And what that means is it just it takes a lot of energy to break a water apart from a liquid to a gas. So you have to add a lot of energy in order to do that. And if you want to turn water into steam, it actually you have to go all the way from zero degrees to a hundred degrees. So that's a hundred degrees where water is completely stable. So water is stable over a wide range and we all know that below zero degrees water will freeze. So water can store a lot of heat. The next property of water we're going to talk about is that water is a solvent. So what that means is that water can dissolve any ionic compound. So we talked last about ionic bonds and we said that when sodium, a metal, gives its electron away to chlorine it becomes positively charged. Chlorine grabbed that extra electron and became a negatively charged ion. And those two, because opposites attract, formed an ionic bond between them. Now what happens is that water can come along because water is charged and it will steal the sodium away from the chlorine and steal the chlorine away from the sodium. So if you look over here, here's a negatively charged chlorine ion and you'll see the positively charged hydrogens from these water molecules are attracted to that chlorine and they form a bubble around the chlorine and they steal the chlorine away from the sodium. You look over here, here's the sodium and you'll see it's not the hydrogens but it's the negative oxygens in these water molecules that are surrounding and forming a bubble around the sodium. So the polarity of water, because water is charged, it can break the bonds between ionic compounds. Here you see a sodium ion surrounded by all of these slightly negatively charged oxygens in these water molecules and they're forming a bubble around that sodium. So let's watch a video to show that process. How do ionic compounds dissolve? So here we go, we've got salt and it's being added to water. Because water is a solvent, it can dissolve that salt. And let's watch how it does that. So the oxygens are negative, so they surround the positive sodium and pull it away. The hydrogens are positive and they surround the negative chlorine and pull it away. And that will happen and keep happening until all of that salt is dissolved in the water. So you see this bubble is forming around both the chlorine and the sodium. And those bubbles are called hydration shells. And they just prevent the sodium and chlorine from ever getting back together. So the salt is truly dissolved. Okay, two other terms that you need to know and understand are hydrophilic and hydrophobic. Hydrophilic means water loving. So a hydrophilic compound is any compound that can be dissolved by water. This is usually true of ionic compounds. Hydrophobic are compounds that don't dissolve in water, just like oil won't dissolve in water. So usually covalent compounds are hydrophobic. They're harder to steal away from each other. The last property of water we're going to be talking about is the ionization of water. And basically what that means is that water will dissolve into ions. So this water molecule will disassociate into this positively charged hydrogen ion, which if you remember from Science 10 is an acid, and it will disassociate into this negatively charged hydroxide ion, which if you'll know and remember 
from Science 10 is a base. The reason that we call water neutral then is because there's an equal number of acids and bases, a ratio of one to one, in every water molecule. And the acids neutralize the bases. So water will dissociate into ions, and the same is true going the other way. The hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion can join up to form neutral water. So make sure you come to class with your hot questions all about water.